Oh, are we ready boys? Cheers. Oh, some good coffee. Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Ryan Styles Harris. And in this video today, I wanted to help you guys with some basics of tire prep. Now there's a lot of methods out there. There's a lot of tire sauces. Everyone kind of has their own thing. What I'm gonna show you guys is the different methods that I use. I'm going to demonstrate each of them. And then I'm gonna try and explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, so that you can duplicate the results on your end. First, I wanna run through all the tools that we'll be using today. Up first is gonna be my set of tires. I have a set of J Concepts uh, space bars in the gold compound. Kind of goes without saying that most of the methods that I'm gonna be talking about today are specifically for indoor racing with clay compound tires. The main tool that I'll be using today is gonna be one of my Milwaukee power drills. Um, this one is pretty beefy. You need something that has a fair amount of torque. Otherwise, you won't be able to achieve certain results later in the video, you'll see. So if you have a corded drill, that works great. I prefer the cordless, just in case there isn't a power option where I'm gonna have to be doing some of these methods at a particular track. Like I said already, there's a lot of tire sauces, additives out there. The two that I'm gonna be using today are going to be by the FDJ uh, brand. We have the green dot compound here. And then we have, this one is kind of like a preparation sauce to this one. I'll demonstrate it later and explain it a little bit more, but just so you know, that's what we're gonna be using. One of my favorite tools in this whole thing is gonna be this little guy here. It is a little tire sanding paddle. It's made by Assault RC Products. Uh, Brent over at the Beach RC, he has these custom made and they are absolutely fantastic. I'll go ahead and link them down below in case you guys wanna grab one for yourself. Some tire additive brushes. Specifically, I have two, one for each compound. I try not to mix them up so that I don't ever mess up the tire prep that I'm trying to do. One of the methods that we're gonna be doing is going to require a microfiber towel. You might be able to use a different type of towel, but for the results that I personally look for, this type of towel works the best. This little handy tool here is a little uh, piece that goes into your drill. Uh, it has a 12 millimeter hex on the end. So what we're gonna be doing, demonstrate it real quick for you. You just put the tire right onto this thing here and then we'll put the wheel nut on there. You stick it in the drill and then we'll be able to do what we need to do. Uh, I'll link these little guys down in the description below where you can get them yourself if you don't already have them. Just a little Scotch-Brite pad. Um, they make them in the green ones like this one and then they make like the red ones. I think the red ones last a little bit longer. I just don't have one right now so I'm just gonna use the green one for today's demonstration. We're gonna go ahead and jump into this. The first thing that I like to do is make sure that I am always going to run my tires in the same direction. What do I mean? I'll show you real quick. Grab a Sharpie and we're going to indicate which tire goes on which side based on the direction that it's gonna go, like this. Just grab your Sharpie. What I like to do is just make a little arrow on this inside edge because, so it's gonna rotate this way. Then you grab your other one and you're gonna do the opposite. So now you have one arrow that's gonna go this way and one arrow that's gonna go this way. So when you put them on the car, they're going to rotate in a very specific direction. Now this is very important because some of the techniques that we're gonna be doing today is going to be called edging the tire. We're gonna to get to that in a second, but first I'm gonna show you a very basic step of prepping your tire. Okay. So now that we know the direction that all of our tires are going to be going in, left and right, front and rear, all that jazz, we're gonna go ahead and slap them onto the drill and get this process started. Get your wheel nut on there. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to scuff the tire. It's pretty simple. 
What I like to do is put just a very light layer of sauce onto the tire, and then we're gonna take this scotch Brite pad and we're just going to scuff any sort of release agents and stuff like that off of the tire and get it ready for the track. Slowly rotate the tire, get the sauce on there. Then what I like to do is take my applicator brush and then just work the sauce into the tire. I like to fold the pad over just in half like this, and then we're going to apply a little bit of pressure and we're just going to start scuffing the tire. Remember we put the little arrow on the inside. This little pad will take off a little bit of rubber if you apply enough pressure. So we're gonna try and keep these rotating in the same direction anytime we're going to be scuffing or removing any of the tire. So in this case, we can see that our little arrow is indicating the tire is gonna rotate that way. So we're gonna make sure that the drill is rotating in the same direction, which it is. Now what you may notice is the tire may start to smoke a little bit depending on how much pressure you applied. That's fine, it's perfectly normal, but in this case what we're doing is we're just trying to get the tire as if it got a couple hot laps put on it before it ever goes out onto the track. So I would say what we have just done to the tire, scuffing it in, putting a layer of sauce on it, gives you the maximum amount of tread and technically lifetime of the tire. However, it's not very broken in. If you want to have a very broken in tire, we'll go ahead and take it to the next step, which is going to be edging the tire with that paddle I showed you earlier, and then burning a little bit of sauce into it. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Now, edging the tire is going to further advance the directional character that we're going to give it. Sometimes at the tracks, you don't want a very tall pin on the tire or tread pattern. So knocking it down is going to provide a little bit more stability or grip, uh, just depending on what you're looking for for that particular track. How we do that, it's pretty simple. We're gonna take this little tire sander. It has two sides to it. One side has coarse sandpaper, the other side has pretty fine sandpaper. I'm gonna start with the coarse side because I know that we have a brand new tire and I have to knock down quite a bit of this tread. So like always, check to make sure that the arrow is going in the right direction. Rotating this way. Looks like we're good to go. So be prepared for a mess. There's gonna be tire dust that goes everywhere. You'll probably, the tire might smoke a little bit, again, depending on how much pressure you're applying to it. So just be prepared for a mess. You may have to do this method outside. I don't know. Some tracks have different policies. Always make sure that you check with the race director what you need to do if you're gonna do your tire prep at the track. So let's get a nice close look at it here. So as you can see, we have basically taken a very small amount of tread off of the top of the tire and we're starting to develop a direction. We're kind of cutting off that leading edge so that it gives us more of a face on the tread pattern, which in my opinion, it gives you just a little bit more grip and stability throughout the corners. Now, depending on how much tread you're trying to knock off is going to depend on how much further you would go with the tire sanding. This tire, if you were to leave it like this, obviously it would require a little bit more runtime on the track if you were going to run this tread down a little bit further. However, my personal opinion is what I would do, I'm gonna sand it down just a little bit more and then we're gonna start our first application of burning in tire sauce. So let's go ahead and sand this down a little bit and then we'll take that next step. Sometimes to get a better look at exactly what's going on with the tread, take the Brillo pad and very gently run the tire in the opposite direction to burn off this little bit of tire dust that's in here. 
Now again, it's totally up to you how much tread you want to take off. Just make sure that whatever you're doing to this tire, you do the exact same to the other side and the front, so on and so on and so on. I'm gonna go ahead for the sake of this video to give it a little bit more lifetime. We're gonna stop here with the taking off direct amount of tread with the tire paddle. Now we're gonna start the tire burning process. Go ahead and squeeze out the majority of the sauce in there very slowly. Start turning the tire. Let's get the sauce all over it. There we go. Kind of work this sauce into the tire. So now you have a very sauced tire. Now comes the fun part. This is the part that is probably the most difficult of the entire process to do it correctly. What we're trying to achieve is we're trying to break in the tire. It's trying to become a little bit softer. It's going to grip on the track a little bit more. So if you don't do this enough, what I'm about to do, it doesn't really do much to the tire. There's kind of this point where the tire is going to get really hot and start smoking a lot and it's going to start grabbing the towel a lot. That's the moment that you're looking for. It may take you 10 seconds to get there. It may take you 30 seconds to get there. Just know the end result that you're trying to achieve is a very hot, sticky tire that's smoking a lot. So like always, make sure your tire's rotating in the same direction that you have been. Fold up the towel, and I kind of like to use two fingers and then just start pressing down on it like mad. Now, my torque wrench has that little clutch setting, and I know that when it starts to grab and then it stops, that I've reached that moment where it's really sticky, really soft, and I can stop and check on the tire. Now, this is the part where it gets really messy because you have to feel the tire to see if you've reached the point where it's soft and sticky. So that was a pretty good first round. The tire is a lot softer. I've continued to work that edge into the tire as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do that process again because I know that I have a little bit more to go before I've reached that softness level of the rubber. Get a little bit more sauce on there. Again, make sure the tire is rotating in the direction that it has been. <laughs> Clutch kicked in, so it's probably time to check. The tire is starting to feel much softer now. So at this point, I would say that this tire is ready to be run on the track. It's probably going to need at least one full run before it's completely broken in. But at this point, you've basically knocked down the tread to a very consistent level, you've sauced the rubber, and you've started the break-in process of the tire. Now, after you've reached a point where the tire has been burned in a couple times, it's reached the softness level that you want, and you're basically ready to go out onto the track, one thing that I like to do before I apply another layer of tire sauce is use the white dot from FDJ. This stuff soaks into the tire very quickly and it kind of opens it up and gets it ready to take the sauce into the tire a little bit more than it would if you didn't use this. 
Now, if you reach for the tire brush that you've used for the green stuff, stop it. Use one that has not been used for tire sauce. Now this stuff soaks in pretty quick, so just let it soak in completely. It may take just a couple minutes, then apply the Green Dot FDJ sauce. Again, all it's doing is it's helping the tire additive soak in more than it would normally than without it. And then you're good to go. Now, this would typically be done on the car itself, right about 10 minutes before I'm about to go out for my qualifier, main event, whatever the case may be. The amount of time that you're going to let this soak in before you go out onto the track will vary based on what you will prefer for that particular track day. In most cases, I let this sauce completely soak in and be a dry tire by the time it goes out onto the track. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, as always, drop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them and give you the information you need. All of the products that I've used today are linked down in the description below, like always, along with all the other stuff that I use in the hobby right now. If you liked the video, please like it. That always helps me out. Subscribe if you're not subscribed for more tutorials and race results and all that fun stuff. And that's gonna do it for this one. So I'll see you guys next time.